we're going to look at the starting torque of a DC series motor in, in this video. There are various types of uh, DC motors. The shunt motor, which is on the opposite side of the spectrum to series motor. And there is a compound motor, which is somewhere in between the series and the shunt. And there is a brushless DC motor. However, we are only going to concern ourselves with the series DC motor in this video. The circuit diagram for a series DC motor is like this one. As you can see, there is a field winding and there are some brushes and there is an armature and inside the armature there is an armature winding. This is reflected here in this schematic. So here is the field winding, here are the brushes, here is the commutator, here is the armature winding and I'm only showing one winding. This is the axis about which the armature rotates and here are the poles of the motor. The field winding is wrapped around the material, and that could be iron or it could be steel. And the material will have a permeability mu, where mu is the ratio of the magnetic field strength B and the magnetic force H. When we wire up uh, the winding, it'll, the motor, sorry, it will look like this. So current will come out from the battery through the field windings, through the brushes, onto the armature back out through the commutator, through the brushes and back to the battery. So we can see, if we, as we trace the current through, that the field winding is in series with the armature winding. And that's as indicated here in the circuit diagram. When we apply power then, we are going to get a magnetic field in accordance with the, the right hand rule. So this side will become magnetic north, this will become magnetic south, and we'll get flux lines running from north to south. The strength of the magnetic field is dependent upon the material mu, and the number of turns, the length of the, uh, the, length of the field winding, and the amount of current flowing through it. We can see that by rearranging this equation, mu is equal to b over h, we get an expression for the magnetic uh, field density, so B is equal to mu H, where H is equal to Ni over L. So we can substitute this uh, expression into this formula, and we get a new expression for the magnetic field strength, so B is equal to mu times N L over I. But for a given motor, the permeability is a constant, the number of turns is a constant, the length L is a constant. So we can replace all of these constants with a constant called K1. So we're going to say that the magnetic field strength is equal to K1 times I. Now, when the current passes through the armature, so we have a current carrying conductor inside a magnetic field, then we're going to get a force F. The magnitude of this force F is equal to BIL, and that's from Faraday's law. The L here is the length of the conductor inside the magnetic field. This force, which obeys the left-hand motor rule, is acting at a distance R from the armature axis. The torque, therefore, is equal to BIL R. I can rearrange that equation, and I get torque is equal to BLRI. And once again, uh, we know for a um, motor, the B can be substituted in for this constant time I down here. So making that substitution, I have torque is equal to the constant times the current LRI. Closer examination of this equation allows us to see that for a given motor, L, so this length of the conductor here, and R are also constants. So we have a constant time a constant, which is really just another constant. And we have the current. The current in the field is the same as the current in the armature because it's a series motor. So I by I gives me I squared. So um, the torque developed by the motor is proportional to the current squares. Finally, from mechanics, we know that torque is also equal to the product of the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So 
the moment of inertia is dependent upon the mass and the radius of the armature and whatever is connected to it. So we can also say that that is a constant. So we can see from these two equations, if I have a large current, then I'm going to get a large torque. And a large torque is going to give me a large angular acceleration. So, for example, if we have a car, the starter motor will draw approximately 60 amps. So if we square 60 amps, we're going to get 3,600. And that means that for a, a given um, moment of inertia, we'll get a high angular um, acceleration. In other words, the engine will rotate from zero RPM to a higher RPM reasonably quickly. Accordingly, uh, series motors are good starter motors as they provide a high starting torque.